Hey, this is Pastor Eric, and uh, if you're watching this, it's because I'm not there. I was hoping to be there, um, but I've had a few uh, secondary infection issues that I'm trying to deal with, but I really wish I could be there with you. I just want you to know that so much. Um, I would much rather be with you in person. Let me see if I can tap on this. <laughs> Make it a little better. I'd much rather be with you in person than um, uh, being by video, but I thought you know what? I've been putting off this message for several weeks, and it's a really appropriate message. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let this be a part of the message for this week. So here it is. We're going to talk tonight or today about dealing with pain. Doesn't that sound appropriate? Uh, you know, I don't know. We're going to talk. We, we're uh, including this idea or, or continuing this idea that I had a few weeks ago of focus is looking at where your life is headed. And pain is one of those things that can do one of two things. It will either distract you from the important things in life and what really matters, or pain can actually be used by God to refocus you. Refocus you. Now, there's all kind of pain. There's physical pain. Obviously, I've had a lot of that. You can see all the pokes on my arm and everywhere else. Uh, um, we have emotional pain sometimes, things that have happened to us in the past, things that we've dealt with, things that we're dealing with now. Some of us deal with emotional pain all the time. And then others of us even deal with uh, mental pain, maybe issues uh, mentally, sometimes a, maybe a chemical imbalance or even when our vitamins are off or when we uh, sometimes are in mental anguish over something. And so all of those things are pain, but there's a lot of ways that those play themselves out. So there's an endless list that I could mention. So before we start, I just want you to think of something, and I hate to start this way, but I want you to think of something painful that happened in your life or maybe something you're dealing with. It could even be what I want you to think of, and maybe do that. And then number two, I want you to think of somebody you know, other than me, you're not allowed to count me, uh, someone you know who is dealing with something painful right now. Because I want you to use this sermon to pray for them as you go through it. So let's look at the points very quickly and walk through this sermon. Number one, um, <clears throat> number one, God can use pain to change us. God can use pain to change us. Now, years ago, I went fishing on my mother's lake. And when I was fishing on my mom's lake, I uh, <clears throat> was out in my John boat. I had a little electric motor. And that electric motor was awesome. I could get all kind of places that you couldn't get. And then I would bass fish. And I guess because of the electric motor, the bass couldn't hear me. I don't know. But man, I caught a lot of fish. Well, one day I was out fishing and a storm came up on the lake and I started heading back to my mom's, but on the way, the wind caught the side of that John boat and pushed me into the reeds, and I could not get out. I had a paddle, I had the, the boat going full, I was paddling as hard as I could, and there was no getting out of the reeds. But then all of a sudden, my brother-in-law, who was on his jet ski, noticed that I was stuck. He came over, hooked a rope to my boat, and my goodness gracious, I was home in record time before the storm came, and it was awesome. So anyway, I got a phone call while I was trying to finish that story. So I was blown into the woods. He came, got me with his jet ski, and it was awesome. I got home, got inside. It started lightning and going crazy. But here's the point of that whole story is this. There are times in life that you just can't do it on your own. You know, every once in a while, somebody will say, God doesn't give you anything you can't handle. Now, when somebody says that to me, let me tell you what I say. Oh, thank you so much. I know he doesn't, you know. But here's what I know theologically, and that's absolutely true. He gives you lots of things that you can't handle on your own. That's the whole point. He gives you things that you need him and at times you need other people to be able to walk through things. God gives you more than you can handle sometimes. So let me look at this. God can use pain to change us. Here's a verse for you, Romans 5, 3 through 5. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Why? Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Why? Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. This whole idea here of perseverance is the whole idea of endurance in scripture. And in the Greek, it means to place something under something heavy. Have you ever felt that way when it comes to pain, when it comes to 
struggle in your life? You ever felt like you're under something? I can tell you these last uh, five or six, seven weeks or more for me have felt that way. But it's awesome because number one, God has been with me. There's so many times that I just knew in so many ways that he was with me. Number two is I knew people were praying for me. Know that people are praying for you. Listen, here's what it says in 1 Peter 4. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you. By the way, this word for surprised basically is like when a stranger visits. Don't think that suddenly a stranger, like I've never had anything bad happen. Well, the truth is bad things happen. So he says, don't be surprised as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you're insulted because of the name of Christ, you're blessed. For the spirit of glory and God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any kind of criminal or even as a meddler. I don't know what that means. <laughs> don't meddle with other people's stuff. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Listen, not everyone who suffers in life comes out better. A lot of people come out bitter. And you have a choice through every pain, every trial, every struggle. You can come out better or you can come out bitter. How do you come out better? You trust God, understand that nothing goes without his watch. Now listen, God allows pain. It doesn't mean he caused the pain, but he allows the pain and he will use the pain for your good if you let him. So let me ask you this first question. What am I learning from my pain? Elizabeth Elliot says this, I'm not a theologian or a scholar, but I'm very aware of the fact that pain is necessary to all of us. In my own life, I can honestly say that out of the deepest pain has come the strongest conviction of the presence of God and the love of God. And if you allow him to, even in those worst places, God will show up in those times. Let me stop this till we go to point two. So let's pick up on point number two at a different location. Um, number two is cross-bearing or obedience is painful. Listen, when Jesus said to take up your cross, he wasn't talking about something fun. I always tell people, I wish that the Bible said it was refiner's jacuzzi or take up your jacuzzi and follow me or take up your spa or something fun. But the truth is he says, take up your cross because following him is difficult. We're sometimes surprised by pain. You know, uh, I remember years ago teaching Ricky how to ride a bike and little Ricky was so cute on his bike, had a little helmet. He's all ready to go, uh, arm guards and everything. And he started with uh, training wheels, but then we started taking the training wheels off and I would grab a hold of the back of his seat and I would run next to his bike and then let him go. And the first few times I did that, I'd let him go and he'd go straight for just a little bit and then boom, right into the grass. Well, thankfully it was in the grass but he still got scraped sometimes. Sometimes he got hurt. Sometimes he said, ow, it hurt. But you know what he did every time? He got back on the bike. Listen, there will be times where you will fail as a Christian. You know that you're supposed to take up your cross. You know that you're supposed to follow Jesus. And sometimes the truth is you just fall down, but you have a choice at that point. Am I going to keep going? By the way, sometimes people will push you off your bike as a Christian. Your fall will be because of others. So Listen to what it says in scripture, Luke 9, 23 to 26. Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. By the way, that's the key daily. That one of the reasons I encourage people to have a daily time in the Bible, a daily time of prayer is it helps you to refocus on getting rid of your selfishness, our self-centeredness. It's so natural, that gravity that attracts us to selfishness and to follow him every day. So it continues daily and follow me. So for whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the son of man will be ashamed of them when he comes into his glory and the glory of the father and the holy angels. So Jesus includes this idea of suffering, the idea of taking up his cross with talking about him, telling others about him. So when's the last time you've told anybody about Jesus? When's the last time you even said, I'm a Christian or I go to church or whatever in order to say, hey, I'm putting myself out there. Now, listen, when you do that, it's risky. When you take up your cross, it's painful. There's times when you tell somebody you're a Christian, they're going to laugh at you. I've had people call me a Jesus freak. I've had people tell me things that I felt like God wanted me to do. And they said, are you crazy? <laughs> 
So you never know the response you'll get. But Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. Discipleship is not a matter of making a spiritual checklist, however. Too often we think it's about this list and checking off acts of obedience. You know, we have no cussing, no drinking, no smoking. You know, we'd have that little list we might have. Maybe we add some other ones in there. And and then it maybe has a list of do's, like go to church, uh, be nice to people, uh, you know, don't yell at that neighbor, whatever it might be. And most of the Christian walk, uh, uh, many times it's easier to do a checklist. We think, oh, a checklist, I can keep up with that. Oh, I'm a good Christian today. I did my checklist. Oh, I'm a bad Christian today. I didn't do my checklist. But that's not what it means to be a Christian. Discipleship is a much deeper matter. And I love this quote. It's a matter of the heart and the mind. You can take up a list of do's and don'ts and still be prideful and still be arrogant. So what's the difference? Live in the power of the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to help you to take up your cross daily, not just in your flesh. Jesus said this, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. What is a disciple? Somebody who has spiritual disciplines. That word disciple comes from the word discipline. So you begin to practice those disciplines, not a checklist of do's and don'ts, but those spiritual disciplines that help you walk with him. So you learn to spend time in prayer. You learn to spend time slowing down and allowing the Holy Spirit to remind you of what his word says so that in these situations, when pain comes up, when frustration and anger and painful situations happen, you're reminded, hey, I'm with you always. And then it continues, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So one of the things he commanded us to do is to baptize in the name of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then it says, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. So let me ask you a couple questions. What would it look like in your home if you taught your kids to serve? What would it look like at work if you served other people? What would it look like at work if not, listen, some of you don't have boundaries and you need to find boundaries at work, but the truth is some of you never go out of your way for other people. So what would it look like in your life if you went out of your way to think of others? So I want to go back to that question I asked at the beginning. Who do you know that's in some pain? Who do you know that's struggling with something? You could send them a note. And listen, you might not even be comfortable sending them a note from you. So send them a note from Anonymous. Maybe send them a gift card. Maybe it's somebody who you know needs something or needs help, but it's not a good it's not a good place for you to be able to share that. So go out of your way, hey, to be a blessing to them. And what would happen in our church if we did that? If we really went out of our way to make guests feel welcome, if every time we had church, we looked for opportunities, not just to talk to our friends, not just to talk to people we've known, but to go out of our way to talk to other people. And here's the truth. Some of you have come to church for weeks and even months, and you've never gone out of your way to pursue anybody else and say, hey, have we met? My name is and gone out of our way to introduce ourselves to others or to even go that next step and say, hey, I've been coming. Thanks for introducing yourself. You want to go get some lunch? You want to go get some dinner? You want to go get some break? Getting to know people, joining a team, being a part of a team that gets to know others. Let me ask you this second statement in our notes is this. Ask God to strengthen me to carry my cross. Listen, we don't naturally do unselfish things. Take, doing unselfish things means that we have to endure suffering, sometimes struggle. Listen, even the people who have to open the door on Sunday morning and hand us a bulletin, there are times that they don't feel like coming to church. But the truth is, those are the days that we say, no, God's called me to do this. So let's take up our cross and follow him. That's point two. Okay, here we go. Point number three, obedience is possible, but only with his spirit. I know it doesn't say but only, but it was just taking up too much room. Obedience is possible with the Spirit. Here's the truth. In your flesh, in yourself, you can kind of force yourself to be obedient or look obedient for a while. But the truth is, even when you look obedient, we tend to be selfish. We tend to be self-centered. Our own motivations, we're looking for somebody to say thank you. Where Our main motivation is that somebody appreciates us or some other motivation to maybe feel good about ourselves. But the truth is, with the Holy Spirit, He can give us the power to walk in his presence and be obedient. Here's what it says in his word. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while I am with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I don't give you as the world does, 
Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Is your heart ever troubled with worry? Is your heart ever burdened with emotional or physical or whatever pain? You know, sometimes the only prayer that you need to pray is help. Johnny Lord years ago would talk about when her problems would overwhelm her. And one of the things she learned how to do in prayer was just simply take her hands, turn them upward like this and say, God, this is yours. And then she said what she also learned to do then was turn her hands over and say, God, I'm not hanging on to those issues anymore. Is there any issue in your life, any pain in your life, any burden in your life right now that you need to say, God, I'm lifting that up to you and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to keep carrying it around. I'm going to leave it at your throne. Lord, only you can handle this. Only you can deal with it. You know, when I was in the hospital, there just came a point where I was just tired of being tired and tired of being sick. And I finally just said, God, you know what? I can't do this, but you can. And I surrendered it to him. That's your final encouragement. Ask for spirit power to do his will, even in pain. So I said to God, God, I'm in pain. God, this is hard. And what was really cool is I got, had a nurse that I began, uh, a male nurse that I began asking just about their life and what was going on. And to make a long story short, after a little while, they shared a very special thing, a very hard thing that they were dealing with in their life. They were dealing with a sick relative and they didn't know what to do. And their relative was getting ready to go into surgery. And so I just took a minute and I say, can I pray for you? You know, no matter what your circumstances, no matter what your situation, there are times in life that are hard. But there are also times that God, even in the middle of your pain and frustration and your worry, will point somebody else out to you and say, even in your pain, I can use you. When I look back at Peter walking on water, I realize that Peter did not walk on water on a calm day. God did it during a storm. And the times that God's going to use you are not in your times of rest. It's not when you feel like everything's together. By the way, don't wait for everything to get together in order to be obedient to God. Just obey him even in the storm. Life is full of pain. Emotional, physical, mental pain. Some of it's relational from our past. Some from failures. All kinds of reasons for pain. But God allows pain, but he'll use it to change us. It'll help us to grow more like Christ as we take up our cross and follow him and his spirit will give you power. Thanks for being part of the message today. And uh, I know uh, that we have a closing song you can give here, you can give online. And uh, I just want to thank you for being here today. And I thank you for keeping me as your pastor. I really hope to be back next week. If we can get this infection under control, I'll be back. I love you guys. Thanks for giving me a few minutes.